To illustrate, let me drag you back to my college days. First day of chemistry class, my senior year. Now I'm a dumb football player. My cholesterol counts higher than my SAT scores. So I know I'm going to flunk chemistry. It's a done deal. So me and a couple of my teammates, we show up to this giant lecture hall kind of late. And you've seen it as we walk, like we sat on something hot and we come strolling in. And we take our seats about three rows from the very top of this arena, if you will, this, con this, this conference hall, this lecture hall that holds about 2,000 students. And all of a sudden, the professor stands up and he says this, I want you, I want you to introduce yourself to someone in this class whom you've never met before. Before I can even make a move, there's a, a tap on my shoulder. I turn around and it's an 87-year-old woman. Her name is Rose. She says, hey, handsome, want to get lucky? <laughs> I said, I'm all yours. And we became instant friends. In fact, every single day after class, we would walk across campus and, and share a chocolate milkshake at the student union. I asked her questions like, so why, what are you doing in college? Why are you here? She says, you know, find a rich husband, settle down, retire, have a couple of children, you know, the usual. We laughed, but we connected at every level. Rose was so inspirational that as she walked around campus that year, as she attended class after class, at least once a day, usually in the middle of the hot, sunny day, she would have to stop to rest her weary legs. She usually stopped in the library plaza in the middle of campus. And there was the fountain with the wind blowing the mist into our faces. And within moments, 100 or 200 college students would be gathered sitting at the feet of Rose, basking in her wisdom. And what do they say? Wisdom is the gift of the elderly. When an old woman dies, an entire library burns to the ground. And I'll never forget Rose and her spirit and her passion, creativity, and imagination, and her commitment to perseverance and dream the mighty dream. And I suppose if I thought about it way back in those days was the first time I really started understanding the difference between success and significance. I remember Rose with her tact and her unconditional love singling out Melody, a girl that we all knew from the dorms who was battling leukemia, who had a bald head from chemotherapy. So her idea of a fashion statement was to just change the ball cap that covered her head from the hot noonday sun. And in front of all of us, Rose saying, Melody, it's not what happens to you, it's what you do with what happens to you that matters. But she made that cliche come alive when she said, Melody, is there a difference between dying of cancer and living with cancer? And what is it going to be for you? Wow, attitude really is everything. In fact, when your attitude is right, your abilities will always catch up. And it's that positive attitude that keeps us putting one step in front of the other to make sure refinement focuses us on the why instead of the end in mind. Rose was so inspirational that I invited her to speak at our football banquet at the end of the year. Now visualize Rose, 87 years old. Three weeks into college, Rose got a tattoo. <laughs> I was hoping it said Dan the man, wouldn't that have been cool? But it said it was a beautiful little teeny tiny Rose. And about twice a week, Rose would show up in her mini skirt and her pumps, strutting her stuff around campus. Visualize Bette Midler at 87 years of age, auburn hair, usually a hat with a plume in it. Rose was a piece of work. And so I invited her to be our keynote speaker at our year-end football banquet. I introduced Rose. Now visualize this audience, a sea of testosterone steroid poster children. And I introduced Rose, and what happens? Rose steps up to the microphone, and she's so nervous she starts to shake. She drops her speech. Three by five cards go all over the floor. And in that moment of time, Rose taught us the difference between leadership and management. It's not what happens to you as a reactor, which is usually what a manager does. It's being proactive and doing what is necessary, which is what a leader does. Managers have subordinates that they boss around because they've been bossed around. Leaders have followers. And to the best of my knowledge, 
Following is a voluntary experience. If you want to know the kind of leader you are, look at the kind of person who's following you. And in the military, we learned that in the same day, we must be followers and leaders, leaders and followers. You see, the purpose of a leader is to grow more leaders. And somehow, Rose taught us this every single day. Rose drops her speech. Three by five cards go all over the floor. And how is she going to respond? Not react, but respond. She steps up to the microphone and she says, I'm sorry, I'm so nervous. I gave up beer for a Lent and this whiskey's killing me. <laughs> Rose went on to teach us one of the greatest lessons of life. Now visualize the audience, football players. And Rose got right in our faces. She said, you know what, I'm troubled, young men. As I've walked around this campus this year, I've noticed how many college guys are still wearing their old high school athletic letter jackets. I wanted to tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, yo, bro, I know you used to be a stud muffin hunk of burning love, but when your horse dies, dismount. Ha <laughs> She said, get a new horse, quit living in your past, quit trying to be complacent and living off your past laurels and to tie it into Muhammad Ali's wisdom. Once the fight begins, you no longer hold the title. Once the day begins, we can't live off of our past laurels. We've got to rise to the occasion and fire up, not because it's expected by others, but because it's demanded of ourselves. Refinement is a commitment to moment by moment progress, not putting emphasis in the destination, but finding our joy and enduring happiness in the journey. Rose concluded her speech by quoting the lyrics of the song that had just come out called The Rose, made famous by Bette Midler. Rose transformed our lives, and I really believe that that's when I learned and coined my phrase, I like me best when I'm with you, I wanna see you again. A few weeks later, Rose walks across that stage to receive her university diploma, making her a lifelong dream a reality. And two weeks to the day, Rose passes away peacefully in her sleep. She had been battling cancer and did not let any of us, even her closest inner circle of friends, know that she was battling. She was so unselfish and just wanted to give, give, give. Two weeks after she received this diploma, Rose passed away peacefully in her sleep. And over 2,000 college students attended her funeral to pay tribute to this amazing human being who never did anything famous, never made a lot of money, she just made everybody else around her better and leaving her every day, every moment, refined in our attitude and commitment to being all that we were born to be. And I challenge you to refine yourself, refine your talents, refine your qualities, your character traits, refine your core values that inspire us to be better today than we've ever been before. And in that process, I guarantee people will leave saying, I like me best when I'm with you. I want to see you again.